Hello and welcome to Edifying Moments. I'm B. James. As always, I'm excited to be here on a Thursday evening. And just to make sure you never miss any time we go live, I want you to text LCC to 866-891-0606. That way you never miss it because we go live on Sundays at 10 a.m. We go live on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Also, if you want to come in the house, come on, hang out with your boy, man. We at 205 Woodlawn Avenue in Petal. We'd love to have you. We got a seat open for you. Come on, hang out with us on Sundays at 10 a.m. or Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Tuesdays is what we call training in the Word, so it's a really good time. So, But today, it's Thursday. So on Thursdays, we do edifying moments, every Thursday at 7. This way, it's an opportunity for you to kind of get a, a bite-sized piece of what Pastor talked about on Sunday or on the, or the previous Tuesday, and we just kind of break some things down a little bit and talk. That's it. That's pretty much it. It's a little short, so we're going to get right into it. Is that good? Good deal. So it don't matter if it's good or not because you're still watching, so we ain't got a choice. So let's keep it moving, right? So Pastor talked about a subject that is, is dear to my heart because it's one of those subjects that really makes you check yourself. If, you, if you're really ever listening to the word, the Holy Spirit should always hit you with something. You should be convicted. There should be some something that's said that makes you change, make you want to do something different in your life. Because in the best way for you to see something different in your life is to do something different. So he gave us a gut check and he talked about how, uh, he talked about being good and faithful. Good and faithful. We have that responsibility. The, the Bible, even Jesus wants Jesus wants us to be in a position to where when we go to heaven, God says, well done, my good and faithful servant. So good and faithful. The Bible says faithful, a faithful man who can find, which means that, look, <laughs> it's tough to find somebody who actually will do what they say they're going to do. It's a tough thing to find somebody who's faithful. It's a tough thing to find somebody who's good. But he talked about it in the, in the, uh, in the subject matter of being a steward which means a steward is just somebody who's an overseer, somebody who, who has um, the ability or the responsibility of taking care of a thing or things or people, right? And so that's what a steward is. So if somebody who's in charge, a supervisor, leaves you in charge, that makes you the steward or the person who's in charge of that area. So he was just saying, hey, I want you to be good and faithful, but I also want you to realize that you're a steward which means that everything that you have doesn't belong to you. It was a gift. It was something that God gave you. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from above, which means that everything that you have in this life, everything that you use, everything from uh, your body to the responsibilities you have, your job, your finances, all of it, everything that makes you who you are was given to you. God gave it to you. And you have the responsibility of being a steward a good steward of it. That's what your job is. And so what he talked about specifically, one of the scriptures he talked about was the parable of the talents. And I want you to go back and read that. It's a really good parable that really kind of breaks down how God feels when it comes to what we've been given. Um, the Bible says that in, in, in the parable of the talents, it says that the kingdom of heaven is like this is important. Anytime you see the kingdom of heaven is like, you should pay attention, especially if you consider yourself a kingdom citizen, because you're you're getting the cheat code, like you're getting you're getting background information. This is how my system works. The kingdom of heaven is like. And so what he says is that it's like a man goes away, right? But he has three servants and he gives them talents. He gives them talents and he expects when he comes back to see what they did with the talents, right? He expects to see some kind of progress. He expects to see some kind of some kind of growth, a return on his investment. And so he has three individuals. One person he gave five talents to, another person he gave two, and another person he gave one. Talents is just a, a form of a means of, of, of financing or money. So one person he gave five, one he gave two, and the other one he gave one. And the Bible says something very important. It says that he gave them according to their abilities. That means a lot because that means each individual was being watched by the manager, by the supervisor, by the ruler, and he gave to them according to their own capacity. The kingdom of heaven is like, just like that. God has given you what you have already proven to him that you can handle. So everything that's in your life that God has given you is based on 
what you've shown yourself faithful with already. The Bible says it's important that we are faithful with another man's. It's not just that we're doing it to make sure that that man's stuff is taken care of, but everything that we do, we should do unto God. Because God is watching and your ability to handle what you've been given proves to him that you can handle more. So whatever it is that you have, it is God's way of, it's God's way of allowing you to prove yourself. So he gave one member five. That individual went out and guess what? He duplicated, he doubled, he multiplied. He made sure that when the, cert, when the, when the leader came back, he had five more. Then he went to the other person who gave, had two. That person went out, he did business. He did what he had to do, he invested. He, when the leader came back, he had two more. So he went from two to four. And then it went to what the Bible calls, watch this, the wicked servant. He was wicked. And it's not that, the thing about it, I would think that he would be wicked if he went out with that one and did business and lost it. No, 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 no. He was wicked because God gave him something. And then when God showed back up or when the leader showed back up, he didn't have anything to give him except what God gave him originally. That means that God has a mandate on your life to reproduce. Like he expects you to be able to duplicate or multiply. He expects you to be able to grow. He expects that out of you. And if you don't, he says he's a wicked servant. And so what happened is the man began to roll out the excuses. The man said, well, I didn't, you know, I understand that, you know, you wanted that, but I heard you was a mean guy. I heard you was, you know, you was dirty. You was going to treat me wrong. So I didn't, I was afraid. So I went ahead and hid it. I buried it. Think about it. How many of us God has given all kinds of gifts to and talents to? We have the abilities to write. We have the abilities to sing. We have the abilities to, to ministry. We have the abilities to do all these different things. And God has given you responsibilities, even as a, as a parent, as a mother, as a father, or as a spouse. God has given you all these things and he's given you all these responsibilities. And instead of, instead of taking on the challenge, you back down and say, ah, I don't, don't want to mess up. Or you back down and say, ah, I'm, I don't, I, I don't want to fail. It's not the failing that bothers God. It's not trying because he gave you the ability. He said, if you try, I will do what your natural can. But you, if you don't move forward, there's no trust. And the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And faith is just believing that God got your back when you move forward. And if you don't do that, then you can't please him. It's just that simple. So the man who had one talent, he said, well, I, look, I thought you was going, you was going to do me wrong. So I just went ahead and hit it. And the Bible called him wicked. And then he took that talent from him and gave it to the other guy. He said, man, you wicked. So I gave you something and you didn't do anything to duplicate it. You didn't do anything to multiply it. Don't let that be you. Everything that God has given you, he's given it to you for a purpose, which means that what you have is connected to somebody else. It's important for you to write that book. It's important for you to, to sing that song. It's important for you to go to, get up and go to work. It's important for you to exemplify, his, exemplify Christ every day in your life. Why? Because your today is impacting somebody's tomorrow. Who you are right now and the things that you're going through is not just for you. Everything that you have on the, in, on the inside of you, all the things that God has given you, he's given it to you because it is designed as a seed. It's designed to produce fruit in your life and in everybody else that you come in contact with. So don't hide your talents. Get out there. Don't worry about failure. Fight, move forward, be everything that God called you to be. Start right now. You don't have to wait. You can start right now. Sit down, get your pen and paper out, make a plan. Say, I refuse to be less than good. I refuse to be less than faithful. I refuse to not be a good steward. I will be a faithful man. I will be a faithful man because I want at the end of the day, at the when it's all said and done, I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Life Construction Church, building the kingdom of God, one life at a time.